Just before we get started with this video, I just want to say a big thank you to the people who have actually watched the videos that we do and the podcasts that we release. Um, we didn't really expect that. We do this really with um, only us in mind. We didn't really think about uh, it being an audience. And now the more we do that, the now the more we start thinking about an audience. And so it's really nice to have um, subscribers and people who watch it. So I'd like to thank um, Jay Gatsby, uh, Samwise7RPG, Tony Carlstrom, Stuart Miller, also Garblag Games, and a big special mention to them. Very supportive, have been very helpful in recommending mics, uh, setups. Their channel is excellent. You really should go and check them out. They've got a nice Discord server, very friendly people, some even Mac making stuff, which I never really thought I was into, but it's fascinating to see what they do and how they do that. So maybe you also want to do it myself. Check out their Flint and Steel ser series. It's really good, but they've still at the moment, they've got four concurrent current shows going on sort of where we'd like to be um in the kind of quality that they they output thanks very much to garblag games anyway on with this episode welcome you're listening to a rollmaster classic actual play set in terry k anther's excellent shadow world using fantasy grounds you can find session summaries items and characters on obsidian portal where our campaign is called the praise of old men we're also on YouTube, Podbean and Twitch where you can find the various links as well as an index of some of the main points of each episode in the description. Last episode the party made their way into the temple where they found a scrying pool fed by copper tokens, bountiful sarcophagi and a lumbering brass golem. This episode sees them explore the temple further and we join them just after the fight with the golem. And the moment you've headed off into darkness, uh, Shana give me a perception. You get the sense that there's probably a passage or a down cherry if you yes. uh, move your lantern. Okay. Um, Creature came from, so I'm going to look cautiously around. Okay, you can see the passage south. You come across stacked against the walls. You can see there are more of these plain coffins. From time to time, you also come across vases and urns. Some open, some sealed. None contain anything of any of many contain obviously or used to contain oils and essences, but the oils and essences have long since evaporated years, centuries. This place was open. You can't hear any more of these strange guard pause and listen carefully as you do. It looks like all of these tunnels are empty and abandoned. They're still Trans dusty, but yes, Graham. Just che checking down the corridor ahead of me. I'm assuming it'll be empty. We may need to go back to a different door. But um, I'm, my suspicion is it must be guarding something down here. So, oh, there's a room here, guys. Or some stuff in it, maybe. You can certainly see what looks like um, some more urns and jars. You can also cram a slightly larger room. I'll open that up a little. I'll just peek around the corner. You can see a number of what look like workbenches, some empty shelves, and other storage locations. However, against the wall just across to your right crown, towards the west, you can see an upright stone sarcophagus. There's no decoration on this sarcophagus. It's completely plain. Cherry, there's a like an upright sarcophagus in here. It's closed at the moment. Do you want to check it out? It looks like there's some... Urns as well, I think you might be interested in. I'm not sure if there's anything in them. Okay, so I'll have a look at that. I'll come around and have a look. Okay, you can give me a perception. So you approach the sarcophagus, obviously alarmed by the fact that it could be trapped, and it's a good job that you approached it hesitantly. There's something odd about the ceiling above the sarcophagus. The very fact that the sarcophagus is plain and unadorned, uh, when everything else has been certainly made of stone has been artfully carved uh, got your spider senses tingling you suspect this is part of some sort of ceiling trap um, should you be unable to remove or find the mechanism if you were to open the you think that the um, ceiling above you with all of the tons and tons and tons of stone will I have a, I... into pulp I have flashbacks to that ceiling trap I'm, mm -hmm. I'm doing in air quotes that I found at <laughs> that other place. And I'm like, mm. <laughs> scratches the head, wonders. Um, can I do like a, a, a very, very extreme hard per secondary perception check just to double check myself? Nope. Oh, 
Okay. No, you, you think it's trapped. And I can't see the mechanism. Uh, you can have a look for that. Yes. No, I'll definitely have a look for the mechanism. Okay. So another perception? That's right. <laughs> no, there's a mechanism here, but where it is, you don't know. It's given the fact that the ceiling is going to collapse, you need to either open the sarcophagus or just not open the sarcophagus at all. Oh, well, it's so what you suggest, Sherry. Better bold than curious, I say. So, um, do you want me to tie yeah, a rope around you and like jerk the back yeah, and take yeah, anything? No, no, tits no. Up? I'll, I'll have to rely on my time. Yeah, what would strength check or what to open, open the sarcophagus? Yeah, or is there a okay? So, you suspect that trapped but you can't yep. find the trap you're just going to go ahead and open it yeah i've got a set on me today okay set of stones crayon would be proud of all right uh do the rest of you want to step no, i, I oh. do share this information with everybody <laughs> so cherry gonna... thinks that the sarcophagus is trapped to a ceiling trap but she's going to open it anyway i'm gonna say before you do that cherry i'm going to tie something around it at least we can like drag your corpse out if uh, it all comes down on your head, I ain't digging through all that rubble if you go buns up. So, and I move back here. Obviously, that's like gallows humour. It doesn't want the ceiling to come down. <laughs> okay, not a problem. All right, Cherry, um, you pull, tug, because it's heavy. Pull yep. and tug at the door as you can. No trap is triggered. Um, however you're not strong enough to open the sarcophagus fully the oh, it being upright and it being solid stone it's grating on the floor and you don't quite have enough power sheer physical power to wrench the stone open Cran is or somebody like that is going to have but no trap has been triggered clearly yep. over that trap mechanism um has got it must be, or it must be internal somewhere. <laughs> is, it safe, is it safe, Cherry? Yeah, I think so. I, nothing's fallen on me, so uh, do you want to have a try? It's too, I'm too weak. Yeah, all right, I'll get uh, I get the old crowbar out. And which which side do you reckon, left or right? Right side. It's a sarcophagus. So it probably open both ways. Yep, it will be. All okay, right. Cran. So you lever away, and using your power and trusty crowbar you're able to open the sarcophagus. Inside you can see the wrapped form, the mummified form of a tall human. This one though isn't clutching any obvious weapons, jewelry, shields, or anything of any use. As you open the door, the thing slumps towards you. I'm gonna leap back nimbly like a cat wearing 800 pounds of armor. All right, let's have a look at this. Um, a in fact, this is a manoeuvre roll. <laughs> ha! This could be entertaining. I'm waiting for you to fumble it and break a leg. Uh, moving manoeuvre roll, minus 45. Ha! Not That's... as catastrophic as it could have been. No, that is not bad, actually. So you actually move out of the control, and as it does so, that just twists its body so it slumps. Um, against the half-open door. But it doesn't move, it doesn't try and attack you. It just leans, sadly, against the door, which is half-open. Looking behind the body crown, there doesn't seem to be anything else in this sarcophagus. This is just a burial. Nearly bloody shat myself when that fell out. <laughs> I, I, same here. Um, I, I, yeah, I say to the, to the cops, oh, sorry. Please return to your day and <laughs> move on. Can I go and have a look um, just at it and just see, is it human or has it got like uh, wing structures? It looks like it's winged again. It's another, but obviously not, I don't know, a high ranking, important, noble, whatever the other one was. But it's definitely humanoid rather than human. Okay. So I'll look a bit down to the south and then there's too much too much to complete here, Jerry, for you complete to finish your tendencies. You've, you've got too many options now. 
I know. I'm, <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> which way do I go now? All up to you. All up to me. I think we go east and make sure that our backs are covered when when we go that south pass. Okay. You can see just to down towards your right, Cherry. You can see what could be another chamber. Opposite you, there's another tunnel. Yep. So I'll move up there, look down the tunnel, and then have a look in the room south. This small chamber um, is actually probably more empty than the others. You can see again there's a coffin. You've come across a, a number of these. There are also what look to be some benches and shelving storage units. Right here. I'm starting. Is that all right, love? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm just starting to think that we, we just took out the caretaker of this place. <laughs> I wonder if that thimble was a word. I'm going to keep moving up. Wanna... Still nothing has moved out, out of, out of um, hat to leave. This is obviously a, a dead end. But there's another one of these stone sarcophaguses. Oh, sarcophagi, sorry. This one's slightly different in design. Still quite elaborate and with more um, writing. Fortunately, the spell that Silk casts is still functional. So there's a stone sarcophagus has writing and again the angel that have been carefully engraved into sides of this uh, sepulchre. They're armed and fighting the monsters and creatures from uh, nightmares. This time the writing with Silk says the following. So it is the teachings of our warp master. One should make his decision with a basic seven breaths. It is a matter of being determined and having the spirit to break through to the other side. Here mm. rests Lord Kibu, the right arm of Lord Agamenthal Raz. For whose for whosoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning through patience and comfort the wisdom of those who came before us guides us that we might have hope. Get that thing open. Okay. So right, where's, where's Betty? So with a tingle of excitement, you decide to sarcophagus to see what lies with uh, Cran. Another strength roll, please. See if you can leave it open. So you. Were Betty. Just standard, no, no modifiers or any anyone else helping or? Well, to yeah. lift it, somebody's going to have to help you. Um, so Ugnan can help lift. You've got, it's. this is going to be slightly easier to get at and lift. This is a straight strength throw with Shana's help as well. And Betty, this is going to be easy to open. All right. Let's see what we can do, chaps. <laughs> you can see all the sinews stretching on Cran's forearms. His neck's um, looking horrible. And then you look across at Ugnan and say, Ugnan, you need to lift as well. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> so inside the stone side, gain carefully body of Amarishi. Um, they are tall, over six feet in height. Uh, resting on type of the white linen wrappings, this time it's a carefully folded black rope belt. Resting on top of the belt is a silver ring. Folded arms of the figure cradle another long slender or the slightly curve. A sword similar to the one that Numal has already recovered. Ooh. Ugga's going to want to take those out and start looking through them, and letting Silk have a look as well for the staves and wands, etc. Okay. Um, so give me a roll for the belt first of all, then. That'll do me. There you go. And then give me one for the uh, ring warming up. And then give me one... Sword, please. Wow, those are some of the best rolls you've had tonight. <laughs> okay. So it's another katana. Importantly, it's slaying against demons, wholly against the undead. A useful shock ring, and obviously this black rope belt. Wow, I like the way it goes across a weapon. Some nice gear. Cool. So the shock ring will act on shake hands with somebody. It gives them a C critical you actually have to willfully discharge one of the charges. If you were to wear one of those, it, you wouldn't lose the charges automatically. You choose whether to activate the ring or not. Okay. Groan. Uh, and that would be a bit goody. It, it works. Uh, anybody interested in any of the items? Uh, I know somebody, somebody might be. Yeah, I was thinking the same. Numo can look after that. Nobody else wants but it is slaying against demons. So if you've got one hand edge, you could use half yeah, yeah. of that. 
So I might I might take the second one. katana. I'll well, sorry, I'll take the katana. Okay. Um, obviously, the belt will be to Shana, although um, and the ring might be good for us. Can, I was going to say, could I take the ring? Well, but it won't really be Shana on the silk or even a silk. Could Shana make use of it with a punch attack? That's what uh, I was yes. wondering. Yeah, it's, she wouldn't be able to charge it sweep or a that sort of move, but if she just strike attack, yes, she could discharge it with the ring. Wow. Nice. If no one else wants it, I, I would certainly take it. Go for it. Go for so it. So effectively, Shana, uh, Craig, if you were to make a strike attack, you'd be able to get a C electricity critical in addition to any other you've hit with you just have to do a critical um and you've got a certain number of charges so once you have that thing on your character sheet i'll let you know how many charges you've got one after you've made your first attack with it because you'll know how much power is left in the ring um nice awesome thanks the belt obviously once you've put that on that um, doesn't require any charges all the time sean has come down to black belt <laughs> <laughs> yes i suppose so uh, right, folks, okay, that takes... Okay, so let's do something for the uh, various <laughs> podcasts and streams. So here you are in the Temple of the Forgotten Night. Why it's called the Temple of the Forgotten Night, you're still not sure. Clearly, this we is some sort of... Forgot. Yeah, you would completely forgot why we're here and why it's called. Clearly, it's more of a memorial and a site of remembrance for these forgotten and unknown people called the Amarishi. You've seen images, statues, and so on of these angelic, majestic humanoids um, in a large central hall, which had a pool of memories that you could trigger by throwing copper coins in. And you all got the impression that these angelic-like beings were perhaps here to find some sort of final climactic battle. Putting one and one together and fortunately making two, it's not beyond your um, abilities to rationalise that perhaps the Amarishi were brought here by some other beings to fight against the evil forces, the evil humans that were living in Tarak Nev. You know enough of the city to know that towards the middle of the second and late, late latter days of the second age, there was a huge battle on the island of Aaron Moor, which laid waste the city, left the place ruins, and has left it uh, infested with demons. You were advised to come to this temple to get hold of as many artifacts, weapons, items, and so on, to help you explore the city. The reason you're exploring the city specifically is to look for um, two rods, portals of summoning, or sorry, rods of summoning, that will allow you to open up portals that have hitherto been locked, close portals that have been opened, and more importantly, help stabilize and free the seer that you want to rescue, who still lies trapped by a demon beneath the streets of Selkai. So far, you've come across two sarcophagi, two uh, heroes of the Amarishi people. You've destroyed what you assume to be some sort of temple guardian, a huge, ponderous, but horribly strong brass golem. Above you, the heat is beating down mercilessly, so you're probably thankful to be inside deep underground. You stand at the moment in a small alcove where you uncovered the second sarcophagus, having not too long ago defeated the brass guardian. What do you wish to do now? I, I quickly grab Craig's items uh, and no, <laughs> just. <laughs> <laughs> but Silk shows up uh, huffing and puffing and she says, oh, guys, I, I, I'm better now. Uh, sorry. Sorry I wasn't doing much and hiding in the corner last time. Good to have you back with us. Uh, so this like maze we're in at the moment reminds me of like the streets around the shutters. We can't go more than like 20 feet before you have to turn a corner. But have we got anywhere else to explore down here? It looks like there's like one small corner we need to go and like investigate and then maybe head into the big room again. What do you think? Yeah, I think we've got to keep going because if there's more of these sarcophaguses around, then there's maybe more stuff to take. And it sounds like they, we're almost supposed to have this stuff, so uh, I'm hoping we can get some stuff. All right, let's head, let's head west then and see if there's anything in that last area. 
there might be a charging station or something for that massive great automaton. Ugrin's got Ugrin's got a lantern out. And that's the purple circle. Okay, so oh, there's your light source. As some of you can see in the dark, some of you can't. One of the problems with your light source, of course, uh, as you're fairly well aware as experienced adventurers, is things will see you via your light before you see them, unless you're careful. So what Cherry has been doing regularly is getting you all to wait. She sneaks ahead and uses a small candle to light small portions as she sneaks ahead. Don't know if you still want to do that, Cherry, or whether you just want to now explore the rest of this level as quickly as you can. Can you all make perception rolls? Grant just grins back over his shoulder and says, uh, the upside of everyone seeing me is I'm so damned ugly, many of the things fuck off before we get anywhere near it. <laughs> I almost didn't join you guys because of that. <laughs> That's right. Long ago. <laughs> Uh, Craig goes to a bit of a moop now after that. After, <laughs> after his joke, joke got turned around on him. So. Yeah, I, that's I, right. have, I have n no idea why I joined you guys. Oh, oh I, I, no we way. were fast friends right away, Cherry. You and I, you, I don't know. Oh, okay. It was a weird homoerotic um, mutual infatuation that started on day one, I seem to remember. It really uh, was. Okay, so... As you pause and listen to the sounds of the uh, tunnels, you are relieved to hear no sound of heavy boots on the stone floors. You can't even hear the jungle noises above you. There is a, an almost deafening silence that envelops and surrounds you. The air is cool and dry. There isn't really much dust to disturb as you move along, though you can see in the corners against the walls that dust has piled up over the decades. But the tomb has been so well sealed and the golems have done their job so well that there aren't even any rodents or um, other vermin scurrying around in the, in the tomb or amongst the tombs. Cran, by the light of your helmet, you can obviously see the remains of the golem that you managed to um, smash to the floor. The golem has still not stirred and remains broken in pieces. You'll recall that you managed to separate some of his limbs as a combination of spells, arrows and your axe hammered the creature to defeat. If you want to move your tokens to where you want, please. Thank you. Uh, Numel, you've been sort of waiting back somewhat. Cherry will go somewhere towards the back as well, just in case. She's quite happy to get to the rear. Cherry, you sneak ahead. Can you give me a perception roll as you pause at the corner before calling Cran forward with his light? You can't hear anything, nor can you smell or, or see anything out of the ordinary. Just across to your left-hand side, you can see um, a coffin sealed. But other than that, nothing. Everything is quiet. Cherry, do you want to advance with your candle? Do you want to summon Cran forward? I'll advance with the candle as I summon Cran forward. Cran, I can see him with Cherry. I'll, I'll, I'll go <laughs> forward with Cherry. All right. Silk, you two of you have got superior because you're an elf, so you can probably see uh, a little bit better than Cran without his light. Can you make a perception roll as well, please, Silk? Okay. Come on, baby, do it and be good. <laughs> uh, Silk, you tap Cherry on the shoulder and sort of gesture that she could probably go on a bit, because you too can hear and see nothing. As you look behind you, Silk, you can see Cran just uh, dropping to one knee quietly, grasping his axe in one hand. Um, he's ready to go forward as well. There's no sound of uh, anything moving around down here. You could well be on your own. Cherry, do you want to advance with your candle? Just a little bit. <laughs> I can pick my head around the corner. Okay. Let me just clear the mask. So, Cherry, as you advance, you notice 
uh, crayon also closes up as well. Um, by the light of your candle, you can see a number of alcoves in this stretch of the tunnels. And the tunnel seems to head off into the distance. Your guess is that it joins a region of these catacombs you've explored before. This area seems to be somewhat less well travelled by the automaton. You're basing that by the fact that there is slightly more dust piled up in the centre. Nothing of any great depth, but certainly there is dust in the centre of this hallway. The golem's feet hasn't kicked and disturbed and moved it into the sides of the wall. What do you want to do? Maybe that's the last person that entered this place. It's just annihilated into ash. Let's just... send Cran forward then, shall we? <laughs> Cran, come here. What'd you say about ash? You go first. Are you well, sure it's we not wink, dust? The lid off? Should we winkle the lid off this uh, thing down here? Might be some trinkets in there. Oh, is this WYSIWYG? Is it coffin exactly where it... Yes, that's right. You're standing right next to a coffin. Oh, it might yeah, already be open resting. with soap. Uh, okay, yes, it very, very much could be. Um, the coffin itself lid is, yes, open. definitely, silk. And silk <laughs> stood there and then, I'll have a look at this. Uh, yeah. Silk, inside you can see bones. Inside the sarcophagi that you've investigated and some tools earlier on, suggest that the Amarishi believed in mummification, preservation of the body, perhaps to fight another battle in the afterlife. The mm -hmm. bodies, however, in the coffins, and certainly the body in this coffin, there's no mummification, bones, and there's no real evidence of wing or um, any wing buds. So whoever's buried in this coffin is human rather than an Amarishi. Uh, Cran, as you come up with your light, you can now look at the dust that lies in the centre of the area where Cherry and Silk stand. Can all three of you give me perception rolls again, please? Excellent. All three of you can tell that the dust here is not simple dust. It is a fairly uniform colour, and it's not, as you first thought, by the light of cherry's flickering candle just scattered or um, formed in the center it's actually formed into a worryingly humanoid shape it looks almost as if the dust has piled itself to form four limbs and a central torso mm. and the dust is an even whitish color almost like ash rather than a dirty dark color Silk, for that. Silk, please don't tell me you're not tasting the dust. I'm going to keep an eye on the elf. Silk, you move further into the dark corridors. Nothing seems to be moving in the corners of these alcoves. They're now a little bit dark. You're blocking the light of Cherry and Cran's candlelight. And the light is now dancing behind, casting rather large shadows itself on the walls. You've stepped over the dust. The dust itself, or the ash is a better term. The ash is probably about a quarter of an inch deep. Um, and as I said, forms a human-like shape. Four limbs and a torso. Trying, and to, trying to move up and just kick around in it with his feet. Not really caring about the sanctity of corpses okay. made of ash. Okay. As, as, soon as, as soon as Agnan sees Cran step was, forward, he starts I, preparing. I was looking... <laughs> okay. I was looking looking for a superstition roll of any sort to see if I can work out what this dust thing is. Okay, Cran, as you kick some of the dust, you, one of, you kick one of the limbs, a small bone rolls out of the ash and promptly turns into powder. Can you give me a perception roll, please? Cherry and Cran, you're close enough. Cran, it looks like the scratch mark kicked the dust out of the way. Excuse me, a small, bo a small bone has rolled into the corner. There are faint scratches on the flagstone floor. Oh, look, there's something here. There's like scratches in the floor. I'll crouch down. Ah, God, this arm is heavy. And uh, I'd have a poke around with something a bit finer, like okay. my finger or something. I, I'd like to check, perhaps. Yeah, something like a trap. Because this, 
this felt one way and now it feels another way. <laughs> okay, so why don't you give us a perception back first, Cherry? Trying to spring backwards as much as 70 pounds of armor allowed to clatter against the wall as Cherry mentioned straps. Cherry, investigating the floor dust itself, as far as you can tell, is clearly not linked to anything mechanical. Cran, as you step away, the scratching on the floor is some right, but it's not a language that you know, and the light here and the dust here would make the writing difficult to decipher anyway. Or oh, I can know, so do you want to I don't know. I've got any luck. So you must have an airbrush or something. We can just brush this crap away and you can take a look. This looks like maybe some kind of obscure writing or something down here. Maybe worth checking out. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm going to have a look. Cancel spell, never look. Oh, well, so got some people. trying to wander off to here just to keep guard and just leave, okay. his, leave the light there, picking his nose and then remembering he's got dust all over it in the night, wiping his nose <laughs> on his sleeve. So. The right that looks like a bad um... cocaine user. <laughs> the writing is in Elvish. Did an Australian just say that? How would he know? The writing is in Elvish. You can see the name of a person is one of the few things that's present in the scroll. Clearly, somebody at some point wrote in the stone. You can see the name Katarine. And is it is it like crudely scrawled on the floor? Is it like neatly chiselled? No, it's crudely scrawled in the floor as if somebody took a nail or something like a, a dagger or something on the floor and a grate. You can see Katarine, there's a pause, and never told us the wards triggered too soon. Can't get out. Mm, never told us. I, I pull out those books that I got from the guys. Like, was there anything in them about this? This um... Right, the books that you've got will take days to read through. Now, you can flick through them now, Silk, but you stand very, very little chance of finding a reference. What, it, uh, what are you sort of looking for in particular in these books? Because these are books about um, Tarek Nev. Okay. And there's no reference. I mean, flicking through them, you see no reference to this place or anybody called Katarine at all. Yeah, that was all it was going to be no. for us. No, sorry. But that's a very, very quick look. Yeah, I'll wait for camp or something and yeah, I'll pull it out yes. again. Yeah, it's going to take days of pouring through. I think it's one of those things we've um, taken for granted with Ugnan and, and to a lesser extent with you, that when you've come up with ideas and you've come up with facts and figures and things you've found out, it has actually taken days of painstaking research. Yeah. So the... with, with all that reading stuff that you do, um, <laughs> <laughs> what, what does it, it seems like from what the wards might be the, and the wards of the temple? Yeah. So you remember that you've seen. They might be a good reference. Yeah, you've seen some of these devices on doors, doors that you've come across, um, looking like this. Some of the doors have rather complicated arcane things on them. Oh, so right. The golem turning up. Are there any of those symbols visible along this corridor? No. So, what do you want to do now? The coffin uh, that Silk uh, couldn't help but investigate is empty apart from some bones. There are no clothes, there don't seem to be any uh, trinkets, no jewellery, no powerful demon-breaking swords of any description, I'm afraid. No, said on Silk. Or do you want to wait for Cherry to come up? Yeah, I'll, I'll follow. I can see at least a little bit further in the dark than maybe you can. Yeah, I mean, you can certainly, uh, certainly with her candle, you can see a last alcove, which has uh, a small chest in it. By chest, before you get excited, I, I really mean a small box. Just on the <laughs> corner, however, though, Silk, you can see another of these stone sarcophagi. It's a six-foot Seven-foot stone sarcophagus, upright sarcophagus, standing just there. Now that oh, I've God. heard wards and stuff, I'll uh, I'll take a look. I should be a little more self-confident in holding myself back. Yeah, so I I gave myself a plus ten <laughs> for yep. the warning. Okay. So anyway, yeah, I, I root myself to the place and I say, okay, Cherry, I promise I won't I won't continue further. But there's a stone box around the corner too. And it's standing upright. Now, the last one that you opened had a body in it, which kind of tumbled forward onto you. Oh, wow. 
I will you want touch me to it. just like pull that open. Yeah, let me just have a quick check. I'll, I'll crouch down it before, just in case it travel. Looking at it, Cherry, and feeling around the gaps bar where the door or the lid, the top, meets the frame, you can't feel any trap mechanisms at all. The stonework looks to be a very different colour and style than the walls around it. You've got no evidence that says there's any trap here. Certainly the last one you opened wasn't yep. trapped. Yeah, I'd just say just be careful of anything being blown out by it, but feel free to open it. And I'm going to hold my katana in my hand, testing its weight, my new boy. Okay. Can you hold this, Sherry? Cheers. Does can it hold me? his giant can, can, you hold, can, you, can you hold my helmet? <laughs> Sorry. Oh, the helmet. <laughs> <laughs> boom, boom. You never know you might need it in a second. <laughs> <laughs> That's an experience point penalty for a start. <laughs> uh, Kran is going to take uh, his trusty, heavily scarred, but most utilised tool in the entire party inventory out of his pack. Yeah, his I crowbar, take out a rag and, uh, and start polishing his helmet. <laughs> uh, leave the patina on there, Luff. It's uh, it's seen some action. Um, I'll uh, <laughs> okay, I'll uh, leave the I'll leave the crowbar into the crack. <laughs> Scott, yes. Stop oh, it. Dear, dear. And uh, and and push push hard. Okay. Is, is this carry on, Rollmaster? <laughs> Matron. <laughs> See, I was going to say the same thing. If I could do a Sid James laugh, I would. <laughs> okay, so you push. Nobody on... can do a Sid James. No, laugh. no, Sid, no. So you push on. I bet there's a sound effect in Sirenscape. I'm definitely doing that one. <laughs> so you push on the crowbar, and with a little bit of leverage, the stone door lid grates on the floor. You... Cran, you can smell something rather acrid and acidic inside. Oh. And you pause. Can you give me a perception roll, please, Cran? Just Cran. So it smells like a dunny in here. It smells like Rook. <laughs> it says, you know. I'm having it. Cran, you can see that there's a faint, um, what looks like a bluish liquid that is just leaking down the inside of the door. And you can see that it's giving off a very pale blue vapour where it meet where it meets the air. When you get closer and breathe on it, you can see that vapour increases. But the oh. vapour is clearly quite heavy and sinks to the floor. The door that you've opened, lid, sarcophagus, has only been opened about one or Do you want to carry on opening the lid or do you want to leave? No, I'll, or I sell Ugnan, Terry, maybe. We need some experts here to take a some some weird stuff leaking out of the bottom. And strangely, it's blue, given the smell, but come and have a look. I'll, um, can... I'll, I'll put the tip of my katana in in amongst it. Like a trap, though? Because you, uh, you add your tip. Um, <laughs> you add the tip of your new sword. Yep. to whatever this bluish liquid is. And the bluish liquid pulls on the sword, tilting your katana backwards. And whatever the liquid is, it's very, very oily and very, very, very moves sluggishly around the blade of your sword. But as far as you can tell, it hasn't done any damage. Though you too can now see that it's giving off a, um, a pale blue vapour that forms just above the liquid and then fall, fall to the floor, sorry, slowly. Mm. Don't breathe that in. That looks really weird. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I'm not, trapped I'm, I, I'm not even sure I'm gonna. I'm keen to wipe it off. I might just put it back in its scabbard with the blue stuff on it. Don't do that. What are you doing? That's a weapon. Yeah, yeah, it'll be fine. It'll, if it's poisonous, it'll, it'll coat it with poison and I can... Add that to damage against something. Who knows? Oh, it's an evil business plan with poison. Speaking of poison, they have a bunch of ranks in there. Is what we can. Can you check check that out and see what it is? I okay. Yeah. You know, yeah. Silk, if you want to give me a. I am misremembering right. apparently because I do not see poison lore anywhere. So I apologize. <laughs> the number of times <laughs> you've misremembered. Seriously, right? Okay. Uh, technical lore? Nope, I don't have. 
No, you That's need really funny. a. If you've got a herb law, I've got yeah, herb law. Um, herb law will do. I'll let you make a herb law. No. Okay, uh, Ugnan, this is almost certainly some sort of reduction poison. The blue uh, liquid that you've got is probably very faintly and weakly acidic. Not surprising, it's not having an effect on the enchanted weapons that you've got, but it's clearly designed to mix with air, vaporize, and then it's the inhalation of the vapor which has the effect. Clearly over time, the potency of this trap and the potency of the vapor is worn off. Your best judgment is that if Cran is careful, he can probably open the sarcophagus without inhaling a lethal amount of this um, rather weak poison. What, what I can do, big lad, is I can put some enchantment on you, which means that it gives you a little bit more resistance to poison just so if anything does go wrong. Why don't you step back a bit? I'll just... I'll stick like a like damp rag over my face and then just push it really hard and then like run. All right, yeah, I've, okay, got, got, I've got absolute faith in you as he takes quite a few steps back. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Numel, are you happy to stand as close to the top of the back? No, no, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, Numel, like out into been... the jungle. Okay, so Sil, could you grab me on it? That's all right. Cheers. Okay, so Cran, you. Soak a handkerchief, a uh, clean one, which surprises everybody. In and silk, water. And, and a nice lilac shade. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> um, with some delicate embroidery around the outside. <laughs> Fran looks up and says, a man's got to have a hobby. He's and... got it's, it's CC embroidered in one corner. <laughs> yes, yeah. Right. So, Cran, you <laughs> cover your mouth and nose with the aid of faithful Betty you open up the sarcophagus. More of this bluish oil leaks down the inside, but it leaks sluggishly. And the vapor that is produced is very easy to avoid. It doesn't actually come very near your face at all. I'll and jump back within, like, as it like, opens. With three great heaves, jumping back as you give these great tugs on the door, the sarcophagus soon stands open. Not surprisingly, the sarcophagus is empty. You can see at the very back of the sarcophagus what was perhaps once a clever trapped mechanism involving bellows, a glass vial and a number of tubes. But you can see that the glass vial is cracked. A lot of the blue liquid over the years is away in stonework and what was left was just not enough to get all dose. Unfortunately, after all of that, the sarcophagus appears totally empty. Were, shrug. were there any inscriptions on the side of that sarcophagus? No, it's completely plain. The coffins have also been plain. It's only been those that have been resting on the ground, the two that you found so far, that have had any deep scroll work or engraving on them. The rest have been very plain, simple affairs. Right, this place is a bus. Let's get back to the pool room. Yeah, good idea. I okay. think I remember some, some bar telling me once, it ain't the cough that carry you off, it's the coffin they carry you off in. Or something like oh. that. He must have written it about this kind of thing. <laughs> nice. Everybody well knows. said. Oh my god, that was so hard to name. Dead joke. You can make your way back. You remember there are the doors that lead up that you couldn't, or rather some stairs that lead up or back up to the hall that uh, you had left alone. If you remember the one that um, Cherry decided with some difficulty to pick was this one. So you can go back via that door, or there are two closed doors that you can see on your map at the top of some stairs, which you can have a go at opening if you wish, Cherry. Cherry, did you take a look in that ash pile? Was there anything in there? No, Cram was kicking about in it, but I didn't really have a look in that ash pile. It was bone. Uh, bone and some like writing from um, some, some woman. I'm assuming it's a woman. And the bone very quickly turns to powdered ash of about the same as the rest of the stuff as you sort of kicked it around. So Cherry, how are confident are you feeling? You remember that these locks were very hard to pick. You've managed to crack one of them, so you've got some familiarity with them, which would Ooh. make them hard if you wish um, to open them. Cherry, I need 40 winks. Why don't you have a crack on the new lock and uh, that'll oh. give me time for a nice breather. <laughs> okay. Oh, you cheeky bugger. <laughs> 
Pushkin nearly okay. bloody, she slapped, slapped um, me on the stomach when I just looked at her, looked at a trap floor. Minus I'll, I'll sit on the floor with my back against the, goal, against the wall and just get a whetstone out and just sharpen the edge of the axe. Okay. One Cherry, minute. you um, feeling perhaps a little bit of pressure, step up to the door, position your candle, kneel down and prepare your picks. And again, the door is actually proving quite difficult to open. As old and ancient as these doors are, whoever built this place not only mortared stone beautifully, but they also engineered the doors extremely well. You can try again if you wish. It's taken you a few minutes so far. You almost had the lock, but then the pick almost seemed to jump in your hand. Very, very close. Huh. Try again. Hello. Give us that wet um, stone, Gran. Yeah, do you want me to... What I'm the hell have you done, your there. axe? Oh, you look like you've been using this to, like, cut masonry. Wait, that bloody brass thing on the back, then it broke my bleeding wrist. Hang on a minute, I'll... Uh, do you want me to give it a bit of a strop? Yeah, please. No, man. let me... Fine. Nope. Nope. You so can go. Try, Let's you go can back to the off. door that I opened. <laughs> are, are you actually going to give up, Cherry? No, no, I'll do one more. You never know. Don't let it beat you, lass. Don't let it beat you. Probably the sound of Cran sharpening an axe. No. Yeah. Come on. Cherry. One more time. Cherry bends down, gets her magic lock picks, and nope. <laughs> this door is not going to be open. Cherry Finish this one. Up. If you've got anyone else need anything sharpening. <laughs> <laughs> Cherry, like your lockpicks. Cherry's yeah, my t my toenails need sharpening. <laughs> Cherry stands up, shakes her head, and says, "No." Nope. Try the next one. Let's go one. back the way we came, shall we? Okay. You haven't broken any lockpicks, and you haven't broken or jammed the lock. I so I could still badly. really keep so going. You're, you're getting, that's again. an improvement. It's definitely an improvement over last week. Okay, so I sit down. I'm going to do a perception check on the lock again. If I may, just a... Okay, that perception roll isn't going to help you. You don't know okay. any secrets about the lock, so this is a straight roll again. Uh, hard, okay. not very hard, but same uh, as I've before. Just added added it to very hard because I've failed a uh, okay. You can change it to hard because you have picked a lock like this before, so you've got some experience with it. Okay. So it is just hard. Okay. But you, if you'd made your perception roll, I'd have changed it. Well, I didn't really succeed in my though. perception roll, so I'm not... So it's just hard. And this time, there is a snick, and the tumblers engage, and you can see that the the uh, small bolts that were holding the bar that engages with the door frame move aside. You can open the door if you want. Yay! As you do so, Cherry, you notice that this door, just like the others, Symbol. has the mysterious symbols upon it okay you can re-enter the hallway if you you've got this large pool in the center of the room which is lined with or has copper discs plain copper discs scattered around the lip of the pool if you toss these in you get these random memories or images triggered facing the pool are a number of large statues of winged angelic type beings um, all of them carry weapons. None of them are particularly heavily armoured. There are three small stone doors to the north. There is a set of double doors across to the west. Where do you wish to go? As you step into the room, you gain eerie, uncanny brazier, two of them, which continue to burn, burning coals, which seem to be everlasting. Coals don't give out any heat, but they do give out a warm, comforting, rosy glow fills the room. Sherry Ever, the um, entrepreneur, said, turns to Ugnan and says, if you can work out how they get that done, we can make ourselves quite a bit of money, mate. Sherry, give me a perception roll as you say that. Sure. You can't help but look down at your candle, and then you pause, and then you look at your candle again, and you think to yourself, my candle isn't behaving itself. It's not dripping any wax, or...? Well, there's certainly something about it quite right. As you Seems step into the room, give me another perception roll, please, Cherry. The rest of you notice Cran, uh, sorry, Cherry pausing on the portal, as it were, just on the stones, looking at her candle. And then she shrugs and steps into the room. No, you can't put your <laughs> finger on it, Cherry, I'm afraid, but, but the way your candle is, is burning, 
But then you too look at the candle and go, well, you know, you lit that candle, Cherry, when we came into this hall. And we've been down here for quite a long That C candle hasn't really shrunk that much. Can Ugnan sort of have a look at the oil reserve and the lantern he's been having on this all time? And does it look like there's more oil than there should be? There's not more oil. There's just more left than there should be. Hmm. So is time going slower than it should be? What's going on? Be? What do you wish to do? Stay are... here forever. <laughs> With no food. Yeah, I'm not going to say young else. and beautiful. <laughs> it's too late for a couple of them. Um, there are three doors to the north and a set of double doors to the west. All of the doors have these warning signs on. Obviously, the double doors look a little bit larger and more impressive than the three doors to the north, which in truth look plainer than any of the doors so far. Stonework is a little bit rougher and less smooth than the others. What do you reckon, these ones? Me, really. I'm, I almost want to just leave them to the end, the big doors to the end. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, I have, to me. I have a crack at them now, isn't it? Well, I'm almost tapped out of PowerPoints myself, so I, I'd like to rest before we open them. Well, uh, I don't know if you've seen these pearls, uh, Silk. They're like, um, it can give you uh, a bit more of a a, a boost in your in your arcane powers out of game there are 50 xp receptacles one use though so once you use the 50 up they're gone they yeah. explode or whatever crumble Crack. oh there's three of those uh, and you're, oh, wow. you're you're carrying them because you're probably going to need them more than i will oh man silk's eyes go big and she's like oh my gosh i love them thank you I do, I do. So Silk could go on the, on the spell equivalent of a shopping spree and blow them all in the next like 20 minutes. Pretty like, much. Super <laughs> yeah. frivolous spell. So as you, as Roll you that SD check. Yeah. yeah. As you yeah. use the PowerPoints <laughs> up, uh, once you've used up 50 PowerPoints worth from the pearls, they basically just crack and become unusable. And is it a Fine, pearl, is it a pearl necklace or a pearl uh, wristband? Uh, I initially I did type into the description in the module pearl necklace, and then I thought with you players, I thought there is no <laughs> way that will go without comment. So, well, so, so far, I, so far, I've had small chests, small boxes, um, shiny helmets, um, and now pearl necklaces. Yeah. So you know we're pretty. I've been holding back. <laughs> for the sake of those of you listening, it's hard to believe that this is a game played by fifty-year-olds. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I okay. just turned 45 I'm, now. Oh, I'm sorry. Back. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, <laughs> Magic. Anyway, yeah. so I changed the description in the form of a silver uh, talk, T-O-R-C. So the silver um, talk itself is quite weighty silk, uh, but nothing okay. that you obviously couldn't carry. But So when the pearls are actually cracked and useless, the talk itself is still a valuable piece of jewellery. It's, it's quite solid. So you can put it around your neck, you can put it in a backpack, you wish just going to use the pearls, obviously they've got to be close to you. So it's only if you're wearing pearl talk that you can actually tap into the powers of the pearls themselves. Can Ogden try a little um, experiment here? He's going to lay out a small dribble of oil, actually a, a long, thin dribble of oil, and he wants to light one end and see if it, burns at the same kind of speed as in like it goes from one end to the other no, no it doesn't it burns very very slowly so the next thing he'll do is he'll then get a water skin and then just slowly open it and just see if the water drips out at a normal rate the water actually drips out at a normal rate okay so it's not time it looks like it's something to do with flames fire it's some some kind of warding some dampener here or light if it's like the eternal night or something night like, could be right. light related hmm. so Cherry turns around and says, so are we resting up or are we pushing on? You can rest up if you wish or you can push on. Certainly you feel that even though the jungle lies, well, some dozen feet above you, nothing has come in after. Of course, you don't know whether the tomb has resealed itself or not, but certainly no garks, for example, have come in after you. You've explored all of this level. You can't hear anything moving around. If you feel confident enough, brave enough, you could try and rest overnight. Yeah, let's grab, so grab a kip and uh, cook some food up. I don't want to eat dark. What's it taste like? Chicken. Chicken. I'll be back in I'll be back in 15 minutes I can't. and okay. it goes outside. So you've probably got some trail ration. Um, you're not exact. Probably silk. Is the only person who feels tired. Silk, I'm assuming, and if you don't mind, we'll probably roll. Uh, 
PowerPoint in this, I don't think we've come across this really before, that when your PowerPoints are used up, you will feel fatigued. I'm not going to ask for exhaustion points or anything, but certainly I think you feel fatigued as you use up power. Is that fair? Yeah, that's totally fair. Yeah, okay. yeah I've only got five left, so... Okay, Ugnan, are you happy with that as well? Oh yeah, absolutely. Your spells. Well, I've, I've already used six, so I'm, I'm yeah, okay. Groovy. So, uh, Silk, aware that Silk is clearly beginning to struggle and looking quite tired, you decide to rest. Though most of you are okay, the skirmish with the Garks—that's really all it was—was was nothing major. Um, the women was difficult to hit, but you manage quite comfortably. And in truth, the brass golem, as threatening and hugely strong and powerful as it was, actually that was also defeated fairly quickly. But mindful of the need to make sure that Silk is at her best, you decide to take this opportunity to rest and to get something to eat. It is probably, and your stomachs are probably telling you, certainly as Cran's growls, okay, it's probably about lunchtime. Yeah, I, f I forgot about Silk, it was all the teleporting with Cherry, because that was the same day, wasn't it? That's right, yeah. Yeah, that's where I dreamed that's myself. That was first thing this morning. Yeah. Cran, Cran okay. will say... So don't worry, love. I'll uh, I'll go outside. I'll bring a couple of orchards of uh, of gark down. Nice fatty bit of gark meat. I'll sort you right out. Oh, I'm mm, like. I do not want any of that, big lad. Those are sentient beings. Even they might be bloodthirsty sentient beings, but oh no, no thanks. Yeah, what about a wyvern? Sorry, what does man. wyvern taste like? Wyvern, I'll now, try. Wyvern, on the other hand, could be interesting. Yeah, tastes like chicken. Give... <laughs> also tastes like chicken. Cran, yes. <laughs> um, as you go back to that the entrance is still open poking your head above ground can you give me a perception roll please Cran indeed Cran's head topples back down the stairs <laughs> you can't see any evidence the Garp have returned the bodies are still where you left them and the women's corpse is still where you left it to actually butcher the women and bring back some meat will probably take um, a couple of hours should you wish do you want to yeah, do this or... on your own, or do you want to to watch your back as you do so? Uh, Ugnan will come and join him. Yeah, you've Ugnan really like the heavy lifting stuff, but you've got a better knowledge of anatomy than I have. My tends to get like yeah, marmalised. You... I tend to turn okay. everything in a chum. Sherry, so... Shana will probably stay with the other girls just in case. The three boys go to the surface to prepare women haunches, which you can do so. So after a number of hours, you can return with a women horn. Three of you, can you make perception rolls, please? We're Once definitely breaking sexual stereotypes here. The three guys are going to do the cooking, and uh, the three girls are having a rest, which is the equivalent of like three of me. in front of the football. That's right. Okay, so Ugnan and Numel cutting into, oh, sorry, and women is not difficult, which is a shame because you were probably hoping that if you could uh, salvage some of the scales, you might be able to make some reasonable women made armour. The truth is that these women's aren't actually protected that well. They're just very sinuousy, very quick and difficult to hit. Their armour actually, or their armoured scales, isn't probably worth scavenging at all. Can he try so and harvest the poison sack? You can try... You've got poison law, haven't you? No, or just her, just law. herb law, herb law first aid. Okay. Kind of thing. There is a skill which allows you to apply and use poison. I think it's a secondary skill. So I'm going to ask you to make a an agility roll because you don't really want this poison leaking out of the stack and all over the various cuts and uh, so on and grazes that you've got on your hands. <laughs> oh, oh no! Just okay. like that, you mean? The good news is you get to try your spell out. <laughs> exactly. If I just wrinkle this out, it should be no problem. Yes. What's yeah. that? You just sprayed it in your yeah. face. What the you hell's going on there? Thumb right in your mouth. <laughs> I didn't know Wyverns had udders. So, yeah, so <laughs> removing the on high Wyvern uh, poison bladder with your teeth was not a particularly good idea. <laughs> um... However, it's only through our mistake that we learn things, and what doesn't kill us strengthens us. True, true story. I was I was out. bitten by an adder as a kid, and I saw the cowboy films, so I actually did try and suck the poison out, and that's a really <laughs> bad idea. Don't do that. It's really, really bad. 
<laughs> well, especially if you're ingesting it, not spitting it out. Correct. It, uh, straight to hospital. Uh, where, where, where did it bite you exactly? <laughs> on, on the little, little finger. On, on Crash Hell. Us on this dolly. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, women venom isn't particularly uh, nasty, and certainly you're aware that you've been poisoned, Ugnan. So you can either cast your spell in. Neutralize it instantly, or you can do something else. What do you want no, to do? I'll do that. I'll do that because I've got plenty of power. Okay, so just, just don't fumble your roll, otherwise I'm going to fall off a chair. Like... <laughs> no, I'm okay. Oh. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Cran reverses. Sorry, Ogden reverses the effect of spell, magnifies the poison, and his leg drops off. He'll just <laughs> fix fix Cran <laughs> and new fix Cran and Numal with a stare, which basically says, "This stays here. Don't tell anybody else." Oh, for fuck's sake, I've got, to, I've got to go and cut the other haunch now. You sprayed that shit all over the meat. Look. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so... So um, while they're taking that time, yes. I'd like to take my time and really check out each of the the remaining un unopened doors. Okay, so if you so, give me perception... Do you want one Gary. perception for everything, or...? No, or... separate perception rolls, please, for each, okay. each of the three. So first... We'll do them, yep. Yep. And there's a telltale plunk while she does that as all the coins in the room are now inside the fa are, are you tossing, are you actually looking? Yeah, it's so cool while everybody's doing thing. their thing. I'm watching that. Yeah. Resting. <laughs> You're resting, Silk, to get your bells back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're resting, stop it. Be okay. Yep. So, Cherry, I know you can multitask, Silk, and I know it's a bit of a lemming, but no. <laughs> So okay. Silk then checks out the second, sorry, Cherry set, checks out the second and then the third. As far as you can, uh, that's perfect, Silk, thank you. Um, as far as you can tell, Cherry, um, the first two doors are not trapped. Do you want to roll for the third, please? None of the doors are trapped. They are clearly locked and they're all warded. But the locks on these doors are far, far simpler. They're actually medium difficulty. Do you okay. want to show off? Because you know that the guys are going to return in a No, no, no. Unlocked, or do you want to wait? I'll wait. I'll okay, wait. do you want to check out the double doors? Yes, I do. I want, okay. to, I want to really check out, not just for traps, but pipe any Doors aren't trapped, but they are locked. Mechanism is very hard. Very. Yeah, it's very hard. Silk, how long do you need to meditate for PowerPoint back? Oh, that's a good question, actually, for Rollmaster. It might be four hours. I think it's usually half or uh, yeah. Even I don't quarter. think yeah. I don't think it's a night's rest if you meditate, is it? I think it's. I thought it was elves needed four hours, was it? But meditate, you can have, thinking, meditation yeah, secondary skill can well. half that. Yeah. Oh, each hour of uninterrupted meditation equals two hours of sleep. So yeah, it might be even half. A... So by the time the. Uh, Cran and the other uh, butchers of Aaron Moore return with their haunches. You probably have got about half of your power, something like that, back, Silk, and you're still meditating. So Silk is sitting near one of the braziers, head slumped slightly forward with her eyes closed, breathing slowly, almost oblivious of the rest of you, though her head twitches slightly as you come in. Cherry is sitting, sitting by the pool, just looking off into the distance. Meanwhile, Cherry, you can see, is just straightening up from the double doors and is just returning to where Silk is standing. So the three of you can dress and prepare the meat that you want to eat. Um, do you want to light a fire and cook the meat inside the hall or do you want to do that outside? Just outside on the top of the stairs. Okay, so you can light and cook the meat and roast it on the outside. Take about roast. So by the time you've got the meat ready, and you've had your share and have taken some then back down to Cherry and Shana and Silk. Silk is probably about ready to come out of her trance. So I know, I know we don't have any like herbs and spices and stuff, but um, what I've heard is if you grind a bit of root up on meat, it tastes absolutely beautiful. <laughs> it's, like, it's just like pepper. <laughs> really? Well, we could try one. Has any? Do any of you actually cooking as a second skill? I know it's not one that everybody leaps for, but it, it would make for a few laughs. Anybody got cooking? Okay, yeah, cooking? I, actually, uh, I do. Yeah. Uh, oh, excellent. Oh, give me a cooking rock. Good shank of fresh cooked 
it's not bad. Just uh, just how I like it, just like my mother used to cook. It's like blackened on the outside and like nice and bloody in the middle. It's perfect. That's, that's right. <laughs> I've got a minor 17 to cooking. <laughs> Some of you might have had better meat. You've certainly not had better um, better women. But yeah, that's not a bad job. That's not a bad job, job. And you get a thumbs up from Fran and probably from Numa as well. Not imagine Numa was a great meat eater, to be honest. No, not at all. No. <laughs> so, Likes uh, Silk, you're probably back on the hit points that you, sorry, power points that you need. Uh, about four hours or so have elapsed. Cherry, can you give me one more perception roll, please? Sure. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. So, the rest of you have now returned. You've got four sets of doors. Silk, uh, sorry, Cherry can confirm that none of the doors to the best of her judgment are trapped she's fairly confident of being able to open three she's a little bit less gung-ho about the double doors across to the west um she warns you that these could be quite difficult and, and opening them might be fine but can, all of can you, i just ask did, yes did, did we investigate the water in the in the pool did anyone did anyone go into it or? no you decided not to get into the based on previous experiences by Cherry of jumping into all suspicious liquids. Also, the place itself just felt rather more sombre. It's certainly, the, whatever the liquid is, pool, it's simply water. Because it seemed as if every time you tossed a coin in, a different memory or a different image, almost like a movie image, filled the water while the yep. pool was rippling so you decided I, not to jump in i hand i hand numel a token and say try throwing this in so what's the token is it just a coin or something? it's a small it's it's a small copper copper doesn't have any marking on it you can to toss the copper disc in what the party discovered i think it was cherry who discovered it is that if you reach in and fish a copper disc out doesn't seem to cause any harm um, and if you toss the same copper disc in again you get the same image replayed do you want to okay. toss a random copper disc in numel sure yes numel will do that okay curious as to whether this will still carry on this pool of memory if you toss um a copper disc in the coin or disc hits the surface of the water creating a series of ripples and eddies ripples and uh, run across the water you can see what looks like um, a pine valley um, with a lake at the bottom and you're seeing it as as it were through somebody's eyes an observer walks down to the lake and you can see what looks like a canoe out in the center of the lake some sort of bark canoe with two figures playing in the canoe one seems to be fishing but his friend seems to be deliberately rocking the boat backwards and forwards. Um, you can faintly hear some angry words. And then the canoe topples over. Just before the canoe goes upside down, um, the figure that was holding the paddle that was rocking suddenly unfurls his wings and takes to the air laughing. The figure with the fishing pole tumbles helplessly into the water and splashes around, gasping for air and reaching for the top of the canoe to pull himself out. As he pulls himself out, he too spreads wings and takes to the air, flying after the still other angelic being. And then the image fades. So I, I relate that image to, to the others. Is, is, is that the same image that they saw? They saw different images. It looks as if... Uh, almost as if somebody had taken to a rather nice holiday camp and filmed these winged creatures just living their lives. There were scenes of these winged creatures practicing weapons, uh, talking to each other, having an important meeting, and so on. Uh, any of us going to fall foul of our wife and chicken? No, no, Excuse the women was well cooked. Fun. Uh, there's nothing in the rules that says you can't live in and survive. Excellent. Excellent. Okay, so 
did, yeah, well, I'm, if, if everyone's, if Silk's ready, we're, I'm ready to open doors. Yeah, certainly. So, um, uh, Silk would normally make a belief get out of but if for any reason she fails that, Cran would probably nudge her in probably actually fairly gentle terms and say, no, 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 come on, get me. We could just wait for her to naturally come out because we don't know if she's fully rested or not. I mean, at the moment, we seem to have people awake. We can put guards on doors and stuff like that, so probably no rush. Okay. Uh, Silk, do you want to give me a... then to come out of your trance? Wakefulness. Like a general perception, maybe? Uh, sorry, no, it's a meditation roll. So you've got... Okay, yeah, uh, I can meditate. your trance, and then to come out of it. Okay, cool. I'll roll that now. Do you want it in the tower? No, no. Because if you fail, the others will wait patiently, and then probably... No problem. <laughs> Silk um, comes out of her trance, just as she needs to, feeling refreshed. You haven't eaten Silk, but probably don't need... Uh, don't feel the need to. As My much bird. as much as the others. Tiny bird appetite, yeah. <laughs> well, you've you've got a figure that's to look how you keep, Yeah, I was gonna say that's how you keep your waist so slim. <laughs> that's right. Uh not eating huge scaly chicken. <laughs> I dare as long you, as Brad. it's your finger. I double dare you. As I long mean, as it's his finger. I guess yeah. <laughs> not my finger. I just warn you. That, uh, That's not silks here. Yeah. Just warn you, she now has access to 150 power points. Yeah. 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 Overcast, level yeah, 50. Yeah, exactly. Okay, okay. so. Uh, so why let children play? <laughs> yeah. Three single doors and two double doors. Which is it to be, folks? I'm going to, I'm choosing north single door. I like north. All right. Yeah, we I'll, know Crane just... wants the big one, but. <laughs> I'll step up, draw my axe, roll my shoulders a bit. Okay. Crick my neck. Okay. Okay, Cherry, give me. Uh, it's. Uh, I think we said it was a light. medium. Medium. Was... That's right. Medium. Yeah. It's not too difficult anyway. Dun, dun, dun. Oof. She says that women isn't quite agreeing with me. Let me have another go. <laughs> so on doors like this, you're not going to break them. Basically, you know, anything badly under fifty means you could. Completely stuffed the lock. Nope, the, there was um, a satisfying clicking noise and the door opens. Thanks. More than I wanted to. Ooh. And you can see what looks like a small storage room. In the center of the sort in the center of this door, you can see a simple wooden box. Nothing else. Okay. Well done, Cherry. Everyone goes through bad patches sometimes. Indeed. More wooden box. It's not locked or anything like that, or no, there's no lock mechanism on it. Okay, I'm gonna crack it open. Okay, inside you can see what looks like a heap of rusted weapons, tarnished uh, metallic armor, perhaps scale and chain. Look to be some uh, short stabbing spears, but the wood uh, on the shafts have um, warped badly over the years. Just can't get the wood for it, you know. Um, oh, no. <laughs> I was wondering who <laughs> got that. Well, I, I, um, it's, I, it's not uncommon for wood to warp after a lot of years. You, you mean, Stuart, you did say wood <laughs> and shaft in the same sentence. So I don't know what you're expecting. Oh, God. Wait till you listen to you this know, I, I get my more mature game of... <laughs> 12 year olds, I know. Yeah, you should <laughs> play with teenagers. They're much more mature. Yeah. Okay. We so, have more euphemisms for it now. Yes, I suppose so. Yes, that's, <laughs> that's right. true. Um, so, yes, the weapons and all look as if they've succumbed to the ravages of time. I let, I say, if anyone wants to check that out, that looks just. I'll go under the next door while. Okay. Give me a. Yeah. I mean, certainly Ugnan will probably have a careful route through them to see if anything is still untarnished. Ugnan, you can clearly see that all of the weapons are quite deeply pitted. So pitted, in fact, it's very, very, very unlikely that any of them have any enchanted properties at all. Okay. Okay, Cherry, try and pick the lock on the middle door, please. You're confident it's not trapped. This is yeah. now a light difficulty because you've already picked this sort of lock. Yep. Oh, that one's almost a... 
Ooh, snuck in, I think. Wasn't even close. Again, another storage room. The wall and uh, floor are very, very simple. Three long chests and a small, stout cupboard almost fill the room. These chests, however, look as if they're locked. The locks are easy pick, though. Easy pick. Oh, even nicer. On two chests, you said, yep. did you? Okay. There are three long chests and a small, oh, three. stout cupboard. Yep, three chests. Before I do that, I want to do a perception check on them. To okay, so if they're trapped, traps. Yep. yep. As far as you can tell, the chests aren't trapped. The lock is very, very simple as well. You would normally be suspicious if there was such a simple lock. These are yep. very, very simple boxes. You can probably pick this lock quite easily. And you do. All three chests, as you work your way up, uh, contain weapons. Virtually all of them are rusted and pitted as well, just as the others. There is also um, scale and chain armour. Though one of the chain shirts is miraculously free of rust and corrosion. Oh, and I picked it up. Mm. Particularly, it's lighter than usual. The chain links, it's a chain shirt. The links are lighter than usual. And the metal links have been fashioned of a rather unfamiliar metal, not just steel. Whatever the alloy is, you've not come across it before, but it's certainly light steel. Okay, um, so it's lighter than steel, but... Yeah. Um, so it's a chain shirt, armor type 13, but it so will does that come, come under, like, a... Because I've only got soft leather, leather. It will encumber you as armor type 5, but it will give you uh, armor type 13 protection. Oh, that is awesome. Nice. Holy dooly. I'm, I'm trying to work. I, I, I look at Numel and go, you seem to get up close more than I do, so will this help be helpful for you? Much type of armor Numel wears. Yeah, Numel uh, is wearing a leather jerkin up five, so he could wear this and have armor type 13 protection. Oh, so it, it works as like, so it's the same. Weight class as armor five, okay. It's same um, weight class as armor type five. Okay. No, no, I'm happy for Numel to take it. Because, um, yeah, you that, seem to... That's extremely be generous. generous. That's extremely generous of you. Thank you, oh, Sherry. Well. Just keep me out of the melee and I'm happy. <laughs> that look good on here. <laughs> well, looks great. Looks, um, looks bloody thank, heavy. Thank you all. Yeah, I was just going to say, so Silk has a penchant with any kind of technology. She just drools over it so you see her walk up to Numo and she's almost petting him with the new chain links he has <laughs> and and almost purring at the same time but she oh, she's actually it's casting so <laughs> yeah she's casting a spell she just got it last uh, level um okay. it's called delving waves metal analysis right and it'll give the nature and origin of natural stone and when and how worked stone was obtained in and worked for stone analysis which is what metal analysis does so in this case it's metal analysis okay, right. so it. it'll tell you what metal is and where it was worked is that right yeah how it was worked and obtained yeah okay so the metal itself so just roll to not fumble your spell yeah. please metal is telenium um it's an alloy and it's made when you combine mithril, true silver, with xenium. Now, you've come across xenium before, if I'm sure. Oh, that's the stuff the house. Xenium is that very unusual weightless or ore. Yeah. Um, or. Now, the only way that this can be, as your spell will tell you, the only way that this can be manufactured, and the art of which is now very little known, certainly you don't know, is using something called a cold forge. So rather than forging this metal with heat, you forge it with extreme cold. So you would have to shape it using heat and then finish it using a cold forge. Now, as far as you're aware, even the dwarves um, don't use cold forges very commonly. So mm -hmm. this could well be an armor or an alloy, which is unique to the Amarishi, these winged beings. That's amazing. I, I blurt all of it out to share with everyone. 
<laughs> what a gift. That would be worth a bob or two, I should think. There doesn't seem to be anything else of any particular value in this chamber. Cherry, are you ready for the third door? I was having, uh, well, we checked out the chest. We haven't checked out the cupboard. I was going to say, Silk, no, you, you, you seem to like cupboards. Feel free to jump on in. If it's nice and dark, I might jump in with you. Mm. Okay, Cherry, are you going to check the cupboard for traps? No. Nope. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll help Agnin. I'll go in with Agnin and help him. Yeah. Are you opening the door of the chest? Sorry. I'll check it over first and see, see if there's anything suspicious about it. Okay, go ahead. I'll help you, buddy. Yeah, as you see here, um, I'm happy that more eyes are looking at this. You, you see that young lad, that young lady? No. What are you talking about? No, I mean, uh, it's, uh, <laughs> it's Cherry there. She wasn't too happy about me looking over a doorway a couple hours ago. Oh. Yeah, she's sulking a little bit. Um, oh, I'm quite glad that. you did, though. Okay, as far as you can tell, and you're not an expert but as far as you can tell this the cupboard door is not trapped it's a plain wooden cupboard in your experience it's just not normal for people to trap cupboard doors uh this door doesn't look locked either okay so it'd be ah it's just a bloody cupboard go on just opens it doesn't make any attempt to flee jump to one side there is no trap there's no there's no gas that Smashes inside. <laughs> it looks like you, uh, this was used to store uh, jars. Inside the jars, you can see what look like oils were stored. The oils have long since evaporated, however. There's a faint residue and film around and in jars, but by no means all of them. Whatever was in the jars has long since evaporated. Faint smell of evergreen. And eucalyptus coming from some of the jars, however. Probably nice. a storeroom for uh, the previous embalming room. Mm, right. Because that room smelled, smelled of evergreen as well, didn't it? Yes, it did. Yeah, it's some sort of smelly oil that was used to combat the smell of uh, putrefaction. Cherry, do you, check, do you want to check that other door? Um, yeah, well, I'll check it. Oh, sorry, again. I'll I'll check it. you've already checked it. Yeah, as far as you can tell, it's certainly... Cherry, do you want to uh, pick the lock? This is quite an easy one to pick now. This is um, light, because you've picked oh, light. a number of these before. Oops, yeah, light. sorry, I've stuffed up. Yep, doors relatively easy to open. Certainly easier than many of the others. Small chambers, obviously, storage again. Three yep. chests against the right-hand wall. There's a pile of chisels, hammers, and woodworking implements against the far wall. None of the chests appear locked, um, so you can open these if you wish. Yep, I'll, I'll go... All checks and open out okay. of pure boldness. Okay. The nails, uh, iron and copper coffin fittings, and some saws and plane. Obviously, woodworking storage, uh, woodworking tools for the coffin makers. Blessed are the coffin <laughs> Um. Okay. Well, that leaves I meant time doors. for glory, I guess. The double doors. Now, they were very hard. They're very hard. Oof. So you want the equivalent of flamboyant? Yes, I do. So I, I prep for nine rounds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, I look at the guys and go, oh, this will be fun to see if I can get. Oh, come on. Thank you. Oh, zero one. Utterly fun. <laughs> okay. The door is locked, is jammed. You're not going to... I sigh. <laughs> I sigh and look at Cran and go, you're, you're up, big guy. Well, well, hang on, hang on. I, I just want to try something. So Silk starts just gesticulating wildly, <laughs> waving her arms across, almost like an African war dance, uh, stomping her feet. And, and then, then it starts she starts raining. Just, damn it, wrong which, <laughs> which you well, which you want to use when you're using a, a secrecy spell? <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, yeah. And she uh, she casts opening two on the door. Oh, sorry, that's a tenth level spell. I don't cast opening two. <laughs> opening one is a fourth level spell. That's it. Twenty uh, percent chance a normal lock will open. Forty five percent chance that a magic lock will open. Okay. Uh, if it fails, ten percent chance the traps go off. <laughs> okay. So roll to get your spell off. Yep. Good. Okay. Spell doesn't. And now. Fail. 25% Under, chance for a normal lock. It's just a normal uh, lock. It's not magical. 20. Yeah, even 20. worse. 20. Yeah, here we go. 20%. Come on. 
it's not going to work, but it was just for me to try and go, I'm so, I'm uh, Cherry, look at me. <laughs> Is this 20 or under? Yeah, done. Finished. No, the Didn't... door shudders, but the lock budge. Ah, oh, darn it, Cherry, you really did screw it up. I totally would have had it. 20% <laughs> chance. <laughs> uh, what's the word I say? Fictive. Cherry okay. just raises an eyebrow. It still doesn't say anything. Lips in a thin <laughs> yeah. line. This looks like a job for Betty. First lips, yeah. Okay, Cran, so the double doors are extremely heavy, and they're locked together. So you've got to give me some idea of how crowbar to open lock double doors so uh first of all i'll just check the check the hinges either side are the hinges visible or not the hinges are visible are there pins in the hinges there are well that'll be easy uh are they kind of riveted over at one end yes i'm gonna get the chisels and hammers from the other end <laughs> yeah okay. well i i'll and try it with it. betty and then go actually that yeah, looks a lot better i'll get okay. like a cotton chisel and try and chisel the bottom of the rivet off and then tap the thing through out all the, right uh, top of okay it. so without too much ado, make please you can start hammering away at the rivets to remove the pins which will then allow you to just a light tug on the doors and they'll probably just fall forwards you um, said a strength you broke up there Stuart. a strength check no 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 i don't think so i mean simple matter of time and the willingness to all make right. a lot of things. Can all of you give me perception rolls? Can you make that a very hard perception roll, please, in the tower? So Cran, with a grunt, bends down and begins whacking away at the pins on the door. A number of you, though, after a while, can hear in between the crack of the hammer on the cold chisel, you can hear something else moving on the other side of the door. Wait, 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 big lad, wait, listen. Heavy boots. Why? I can't hear a thing. Up, What's the matter? Heavy boots come up to the door and pause. And you can hear the sound of metal on metal, as if something is twisting a piece of metal. Weapons! And Cran will leap back and grab his... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Cran, not knowing how far he can, tumbles backwards into the pool. Ah, don't be arse on the brazier. That's right, yes. Okay, so you pause and ready weapons, but the doors remain closed. Can you all give me normal perception rolls again, please? Oh, that's a lot of dice rolls. Okay. Numo and Cran, you can hear boots on the other side of the door. Another set of boots take position. Cran... Uh, and Numo, actually, the sound made by the boot is identical to the sound made by the golem that you fought earlier. Your best guess is there are two of these temple guardians on the other side of the double. Alerted by the noise, they are just waiting for the doors to open. These warding signs, how are they affixed to the doors? Uh, it looks like um, as you get onto large clay discs, and the clay discs have been carefully fixed to the door looks like by copper pin these warding signs on the double door are exactly the same as the others so do you know much about warding i mean if we were to take these off the door i mean that presumably that'll stop the things getting through if we were to wield these warding signs could we just make them bugger off and then we could get into whatever's in there uh so the law that you're looking for would be either obscure law, I'll let you make a roll, or if you've got anything on demons and summoning. Uh, right, okay, Ugden, you're obscure law. Um, as you ask that, you almost instantly know the question. These signs are designed to keep out evil. So they'll be and um, possession. So the signs will be of no use against the golems, but they will keep out. They basically any evil creatures, undead, things that can possess the soul of another creature from moving through the portal. That's interesting finding up. Yeah, you part that. We, have, we haven't found something important in here. It's trying to keep evil out and we're kind of, well, I can, can't speak for myself, but you guys aren't. Then uh, why are we being attacked by these things? Unless there is some sort of command thing to turn them off or make them not attack us. We maybe not have found that yet. Well, we are looting some... Well, my understanding is it's kind of here for the taking for like good folk like us to go and kill some demons. But possible, says, and then Cherry, and, uh, sorry, uh, Silk, perhaps be thinking along this lines, and Ugnan as well. But yeah, the Temple Guardians are fairly mindless. They're here to guard and protect. 
they've got no understanding of goodness or badness. They're just here to protect anything in here from things that are moving around trying to take them. It's not for them to make decisions as to whether you are good and worthy. You're just things that aren't supposed to be here. And th those ward symbols, they're on every door into this pool room. Yes, even the blind end storage rooms. Give me another law, Rob. Uh, obscure law will do, actually, Ugnan. Um, you know that portals are very important. Even incorporeal spirits and uh, wraiths and so on still prefer, and in some cases can only enter a dwelling or a temple or a house or something like that, through a portal, a door, a window, and so on. There are lots and lots and lots of lore, legends, and mythology about protecting doors and portals and so on. And that's clearly what these warding signs are doing. You'll know something about vampires. Vampires can only be invited, and even so, will only enter through a door or a window. Portals are very, very important. So are we sort of thinking this pool in the middle could be a portal? No. But the doors themselves right, okay. and yeah. spirits and things like that will move from one room to another by a door. So where would you put a warding symbol? On a door, on a portal. That's possibly all these warding symbols. So I suppose the thing to consider then is um, do we take these with us when we go so that we can have our own little wards up wherever we stay? So if we're sitting in the city... We can put them around through all the doors, over the windows, and then we've got a little safe haven. Oh, smart, yeah. That's if why they call you brains, I guess. If you can remove them safely, yes. Whether they would still have the same power and so on, you don't know. But you could certainly try. Nice. Does anyone have... I've got charcoal. If anyone has paper, we could take an etching of it and then replicate it. Yeah. That's another alternative, yeah. Good thinking, good thinking. You've been studying demon or demon summon, haven't you, Silk, I bet? No. <laughs> so if if you think that we could do our own versions of these symbols wherever we go, then now's the time to pipe up. Okay. Silk, uh, we need to, I mean, I need to backgrounds for Silk, Cran and Ugnans in the next sort of few weeks because things, I think, are going to become quite interesting. Silk, how much of your knowledge of demons and your temptation with demons do you want to reveal to the others? It's almost time, but not yet. So I'll, I'll give them the... You know what? It's time. I, I trust them now. So, Okay, so Silk would know, given her background and given her age. Remember, she's an elf, so although she looks very young, she isn't. She's um, very, very old indeed. Silk, you'd know that the warding symbols are more to do with preventing demons moving than anything else. So they're quite specific. All wardings need to be specific if they're going to have any power. And these are particularly powerful because they're very specific. They will ward against demons of the pale. And as you know, there are demons of different orders and levels and demons of the pale can be quite powerful the rest is up to you two to discuss or reveal so, so i i do mention it that you know there are demons that are minor demons and this will prevent major demons like almost almost godlike demons from crossing so it's very powerful warding pops a couple of rolls in the tower there for warding and demon just to see if, if he knows yeah. he can fact check whatever um Silk is saying. Yes, so what so from from your understanding of yes, what saying makes absolute sense. Silk's knowledge of demon is quite surprising. You didn't realise she had read as she has, but having said that, you've only been in her company for well, not even a month. Yeah. Um, and as you're aware, she is actually despite her youthful appearance. She has been around for a very long time. In, so she obviously knows a lot more about demons than you. Okay. You're perhaps also aware that she is rather more inquisitive, even as an elf, than you'd expect. And she seems to be particularly fascinated with portals and other places. Exactly why, you don't know. I think that's fair to say, isn't it, Magic? Oh, totally, yeah. That's awesome. Okay, so, okay, so 
you can ah, remove ah. the pins. And is convinced yeah. that he can remove the pin, but there are two things on the other side of it. What yeah, do you reckon, I was, Chips? Well, I was I was going to say Sherry will volunteer to remove the pins while Fran readies his weapon. And yeah. as soon as combat starts, Cherry wants to pull all the way back up to the. You think we can take these? The north columns. Well, we took the last. We took one pretty easily. I have Speak faith in this, but. Speak for yourself. And, we, um, and, and I have confidence in Numel's new armor to keep him semi safe. Oh, why you <laughs> too? If I could just stand up and try and block most of the doorway, there's only one can attack at a time. I'm not sure well, if I can do that. So. But Depends on how big they are. Open one door. What I I could just try and like take a sword and just try and defend. So grab the shield we've got, take the sword, and just you just work around me. So I'll try and goad them just to attack me and try and stave off all the blows. What do you think? If if one of them I don't know looks vulnerable, I'll 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 step in and attack it. But maybe yep. our best chance. Sounds good to me. So I'll step forward and continue the work. Okay, um, if that doesn't so work, it, just remember Shana was very good at jumping around like a bleeding jack and box, so she could always keep one of them busy. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so Shana um, will step up to about here. Yes, carry on. I was going to ask about the uh, the shield coding is on the Brazilian portal, is that right? Yeah, so all the details of the shield are on, as are the details on all the other items found. Okay, and it's Shield of Faith, isn't it? Yeah. And then... Do you and I want to maybe take a position here and you on the opposite side and we can, you know, shoot these things as they're coming out to engage the others? Yeah, it's a good idea. Okay, yeah, I'll I'll stop okay. making so, preparations. Okay, okay, so Numel will step up to Shana. Cran, you step a little way back. Cherry, you tap away on the door so that the first pin drops to the floor with a faint uh, ringing of steel on stone. The second pin on the door is similarly removed, as is the third and final pin. But the door is so heavy and the mechanism so ponderous that the door doesn't swing open. Nor do the creatures on the other side of the door seem to push the door open or to topple it forward. So the door hangs in space resting on the mechanism of the hip, waiting for you to operate the door. Now remember, the okay. door is just a standing slab of stone, probably about yeah. half a ton in weight. I say to Crane, can I borrow Betty to try and leave this open while you guys get ready and stay out of the way of a falling door? Yeah, I'm, I'm wondering if these things are quite simple, that they're, they're guardians, then maybe they're not going to come out unless we go in. That's an idea. Bloody hope so. Okay, Silk casts a spell on herself as you wait. Actually, I'll tell you what, I might as well give one to you, big lad. So, she'll, uh, sorry, he'll take them out in time and then drop the bright aura on you, which is the 15 dB one. Okay. That's 70 Off minutes. Yeah, so just uh, don't fumble your spell. Uh, provokes hilarity. No, nope, that's fine. So, um, horribly weaponed and fully armoured Cran. Do you want to step forward and do the door, or do you want to toss Betty across to um, maybe Cherry to leave up, leave the door open? Yeah, I understand. How high is the door? About eight feet, ten feet? Yeah, so, uh, it's about seven and a half feet to eight feet tall. Okay, so I'll stand there, and I'm going to get ready to jump right onto the top of the door as soon as it crashes and down. It topples forward. Cherry, are you going to move up to the? Yep, you'll see Crans. Oak-like arms grip his axe in one hand, and uh, he's looking pretty grim, looking at the at the door. Not even okay. looking at Cherry levering it open. I'm going to use an axe and shield instead of a spell. Okay, so the door um, crashes open, and you can see beyond with the light light. Raise your light and your lamps of lantern, sloping uh, gently down perhaps 50 feet long. At the end, you can see yet another set of uh, stout, dark, double doors. Um, lining the hallway, you can see a number of marble statues. The statues are identically outfitted with shield and outthrust sword. Some are male, some are female. There are two large brass golems that now, rather than standing at the end of the hall, are now standing at the threshold of the door. 
each carries an enormous pike, and as the door crashes down, each lumbers into action.